ancestry here with some information on how to find your ancestors naturalization records. Why do you want to find these records? Because you can get a much more intimate detail about your ancestor, who they were, what they looked like, um, what their occupation was. You just find out a whole lot more information about them. So unless your family is Native American, at some point in your family history, you will come across the immigrant that came to the United States. Immigrants before the 1850s arriving in the U.S. often don't have significant paperwork that we can find. They may show up in a ship's manifest um, or in an, on an index of immigrants arriving at a port. By the late 1800s, um, the United States began formalizing the immigration process and new arrivals would go through Castle Garden in New York City, where they were processed before they entered the country. Um, this port of entry changed at the turn of the 19th century, and that's when Ellis Island was opened and used as the primary place of processing new immigrants. But there were other ports of entry for immigrants, including Philadelphia, New Orleans, and San Francisco. Once in the country, immigrants were not required to become citizens. However, many did go through the process. So a record is kept of this process, and you can access a copy of it. The, this record provides a ton of information on your family member, including the port of departure, um, the name of the ship, the date of arrival, any family members arriving with them, and often will also include um, an oath of allegiance to the United States. But how do you find this information? Okay. So you can search uh, indexes such as Ancestry.com to try and find these papers, but the easiest method may be to just trace the entry of the immigrant by looking at the 1900 U.S. Census. So we'll take a look at Thomas Otley in the 1900 U.S. Census. We're going to hit the search button under to for Thomas Otley. He's already in my tree. He, your ancestor may not be in your tree yet. So you'll just type their name in. And you'll see that a lot of documents here that are in the green, I've already um, accessed those documents, so we're just going to pop that up. So it may not look exactly like this for you when you do your search. But we're going to open the 1900 U.S. Census for Thomas Otley and take a look at it. When we look at the census, Ancestry does a great job of highlighting the person we're looking for. And under immigration year for Thomas Otley, we have 1885. So knowing the year of arrival allows us to go to Ancestry and search the immigration records for the ancestor. And when we do that, we found that Thomas Otley arrived on the Californian, let's pull that up, which was a ship during that time period bringing immigrants over to the United States. He actually came through Philadelphia, which we can see on this passenger record. So he did not go through New York City as uh, most people think that immigrants do. There are several ports of entry. So here we see him on the ship's manifest, if it would stop moving. Thomas Otley, age 21, a male laborer from England going to the United States of America. So we see when Thomas gave the census taker in 1900 his information, he was off by a few years. Uh, he actually arrived here in 1882, and we find that on his uh, passenger list manifest. So when you do your search and you're looking at the year from 1900, broaden it by a few years. Uh, it may be that your ancestor is having a little bit of amnesia and not exactly remembering the year they came to this country. So just broaden that search a little bit so you can be sure to find them. Now on the 1900 U.S. Census, Thomas is noted as still being an alien. This means that he's not from outer space. He just hasn't become a naturalized citizen. A naturalized citizen is one that's not born in this country, but they complete the process for naturalization. So now Thomas's children were all born in the U.S., so they're all natural born citizens. And as we trace Thomas through the U.S. Census records, by the 1920 census, it's noted that he's become a naturalized citizen and that he did that in 1918. So we'll take a look at that record as well. We are going to look at the 1920 census because I know that that's the, the census that tells us what year he was actually naturalized. 
your ancestor may have that information show up in the 1910 census. So check those censuses between 1900 and 1920 to see when they indicate that they were naturalized. So we pull up 1920 for Thomas. You are going to note that they have Thomas Hartley instead of Otley. Happens. I know it's him because all the family members are there. Let's see. So we'll pull this up. We can see Thomas Otley. He says his year of immigration on this record is 1873. He was off then too. But we see here that he is now a naturalized citizen. That's what the NA stands for. And that he was naturalized in 1918. So once we found this date of naturalization, we can then go and look up the naturalization papers. We have a, like a, a more specific time period to look at instead of this broad, you know, it could be 50 years we're looking for naturalization records. So now we can go back to the search results and we can see, um, like I said, mine are already showing up here because I found them already. Yours will show up in the search when you're looking. But then we can look at the naturalization records for Thomas Otley. And we will view this record. The document that we have is the Declaration of Intention for Thomas Otley. This was usually the first document that was filed for an immigrant. Um, in this document, you may also find a petition for naturalization and an oath of allegiance that they signed. Um, Right now for Thomas, I've only found the declaration of intention, but since his census record indicates that he was naturalized, those other two documents are out there somewhere and we'll find them. But this declaration of intention shows us that um, Thomas Otley has worked as a watch factory worker, uh, tells us his description. He has um, a dark complexion with gray hair and brown eyes. He's about 128 pounds. Tells us he was born in Paisley, Scotland, and his year of um, date of birth. It tells us where he lives at that time. It was 60 Massasoit Street in Waltham. And the vessel that he was on was the Californian. And then it also mentions his wife, Grace, and where she was born and where she's from. And that he's um, giving up allegiance to George V, King of Great Britain and Ireland and he's intending to become a citizen of the United States. So this one document has given us a lot of information about Thomas, what he looked like, um, where he was born, um, what his birth date was, where he lives, like you could actually go and visit that street, which we did in um, Waltham, Massachusetts, and see where he lived and if the building was still there, it was not. Um, but sometimes they are. So this information provides you with other places to search, gives you a really good idea of who your ancestor was and what they looked like. So once you've found the date of immigration for your ancestor in a US census record, don't stop there. Try to locate their naturalization record and find out more uh, intimate details about your ancestor to give you a fuller picture of who they really were. Mm -hmm.